Hello everyone, Moonrider here, and in this video we'll be taking a look at this RGB ICW corner floor lamp from Miordior. A couple key features make this lamp a worthy contender for your living room, gaming setup, or well, anywhere. First, it's super compact with a base that's only 4.5 by 5 inches wide and 2 inches tall, but still heavy and sturdy enough to support the vertical 55 inch RGB pole. It also gives you three control options in the form of buttons on its base, remote control, and app control for Android and iOS. And lastly, it supposedly offers up 16 million color options and 68 dynamic lighting modes. All those reasons factored into why I chose this lamp compared to its competitors. Well, that in price. At the time of purchase, I paid only $42.48 for this lamp from Amazon. Now it's regularly $69.99, but they also offer a two-pack option of this lamp for only $89.99. And that same bundle is still on sale at the time of this recording for $76.48. If you're interested in snagging this lamp for yourself after watching the rest of the video, I'll have the Amazon links posted in the description. Now let's move on to the unboxing. Inside the packaging, you'll find the four pieces of lamp pole supported on the ends by thick foam. Also included is a power adapter, remote control, handy user manual, some screws and Allen wrench, and the base. Assembly is easy and straightforward. Three of the four poles are male-female fixture pieces, and these can be installed in any order. This one with the cap is the top piece. Slide the male end of one of the fixture pieces into the female end of the base, then tighten one of the screws into this hole here. Repeat this process three more times. With the fixture pieces installed and screwed in place, plug in the power adapter. Now you've got three control options to choose from. The three base button controls, remote, and app. Let's cover the simplest first, being the base button controls, which are located on the top of the base. From left to right, pressing C cycles the color mode. The middle is on and off. And pressing M cycles through different music reactive modes. While the base buttons are extremely basic, the remote gives you access to a few more features and quite a bit more control. Starting at the top, you have off and on with an auto button that commences the dynamic color cycle. The second and third rows consist of two mode buttons, essentially with one serving as next mode and the other serving as previous mode in the cycle. There's also quick and slow for adjusting dynamic speeds as well as two brightness buttons. The six colored buttons in the next two rows are quick access static colors, but don't worry the remote does give you access to a few more colors down below. The W button changes the RGB to a warm white and the color button lets you cycle through several shades of each primary color. For instance, here it starts as red, but press it again and you'll have orange, and keep pressing it and you'll eventually reach this bright yellow. There are also variations from purple to magenta, blue to teal, and a cooler toned white. Also nearby, you'll see these four buttons for one to four hour automatic shutout timers. And lastly, on the bottom row are two music mode buttons, and there's also a remote lock button which locks out the remote until you press it again. Now if you're interested in the app, it's available in Google Play and the App Store under Magic Lantern. If you follow the manual's walkthrough, it mentions scanning the QR code, but it doesn't give you a QR code, at least not anywhere I could see. Let me know in the comments if you find it. Anyway, this is the app. It just gives you this basic color wheel to circle around and it lacks any desaturating if, say, you wanted a lilac color versus straight up purple or mint green versus Hulk green. CCT and W appear to give you that extra level, and while CCT assigns those shades pretty accurately, W is much more choppy and inaccurate. Style is where you'll find the dynamic presets, and at the top, you can slide through different, well, styles. Basic contains 47 different dynamic presets with some cooler than others. There's also Curtain with 20 dynamic presets. These are just okay in my opinion. Transition with 20, water with 18 and flow with 24. Now I want to stop on flow because these are actually kind of cool. Now there's also tail with 16, run and run back each with 34 and scenes with 28. Scenes are by far the most disappointing. For some reason, almost all the presets are extremely dim to the point you can barely see color variations. And what in the nightmare before Christmas is Hallow Miss? From what I can make out in an otherwise pitch black room, it's faded hues of yellow and orange with a breathing effect. I definitely don't see any semblance of Christmas in that, and Halloween deserves better. The mic tab actually comes in handy. You see, I've noticed the external mic on the lamp isn't very sensitive. 
or maybe just not good. I thought it might just be my budget soundbar projecting poorly, pretty much no reaction. Meanwhile, it doesn't matter if I'm playing music through my phone, Echo, turn on 3D beam, or my budget soundbar, my Govi Glide picks it right up. That being said, the app lets you select between external mic and phone mic, which actually helps a ton as I can set my tablet or phone near the speaker and the lamp reacts. Guess it's just picking up everything now. All right, tweak out, I guess. Yeah, it is tweaking. So the Gobi Beam isn't really picking anything up because it only if it goes solid color blinking, then it's not picking anything up. It's kind of in standby. Whereas the Mior Dior Beam is. Still going nuts. If you want to switch up the reactive style from rhythm, spectrum, rolling, and oh yeah, energic, well, unfortunately, you only get those reactive choices using the external mic, so I'll just forget about them. Lastly, the app does let you set a schedule for the lamp. You can schedule days and times for it to turn on, and again, days and times to shut off, which is, I guess, kind of cool. So what are my final thoughts on the Mior Dior RGB ICW corner floor lamp? For starters, I like this lamp a lot more before I delve deeper into the extra features to write this review. The biggest thorn in its side is the app, as it's just such a letdown with very limited customization and control. If I do open the app again, it'll only be to select a few of those flow presets. Other than that, the remote will suffice. I actually had this lamp in my setup for the past two weeks before writing this, and I enjoyed using it in the corner for static accent colors. In that regard, it serves its purpose very well. The static colors are bright and they add a vibrant pop of color to my gaming setup. Even the basic dynamic rainbow modes you access through the remote or base buttons look really great with smooth transitions between well-defined colors. I also like its small footprint. The base is so tiny you can essentially place this lamp anywhere, although I'll go out on a limb and assume it won't be quite as stable as ones with a larger diameter base or legs that splay out at a 90 degree angle. At least where I have mine, also being a hard surface, it works good. So bottom line, if you're looking for a heavily customizable RGB floor lamp similar to products from Philips, LifeX, or Govi, this isn't it. However, if all you're looking for from an RGB lamp are bright and vibrant static colors, maybe some dynamic presets, a clever remote, and a base with a micro footprint, then yeah, I think you'll be happy with it. Especially if you can score it on sale like I did. So that's it for my review of the Muir Dior RGB ICW floor lamp. If you have any other questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments. Also give the video a like if you enjoyed it and found it helpful and subscribe to the channel for more gaming setup content and check reviews like this. Thanks for watching, later.